Hey everybody, Jay Shlansky here from the Fifth Trooper Network. I just want to take a moment to thank you for checking out this show. Did you know that over at thefifthtrooper.com we have tons of other content, including blogs, other podcasts, all kinds of stuff. In addition, if you want access to exclusive content, you can join us on patreon.com slash thefifthtrooper and join at any level and you'll get access to uh, exclusive blog articles, access to our private Discord, and much more. So please, Check us out, and thank you so much for all your support. Welcome to the Notorious Scoundrels, a Star Wars Legion podcast bringing you the latest news, general perspective, and competitive discussion. Hello, and welcome back to the Notorious Scoundrels podcast. I'm Mike, and I am here with Mike Cirillo and Tim Timbo. I can't pronounce your last name, so I'm going to let you do it. Feldhaus. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Veldweez, so I'm glad I didn't try to interject. There you go. Nope. <laughs> How you guys doing tonight? Not too bad. It's a nice, easy Monday. It's been really stormy all day, so it's nice to get a little break from the weather. Mm, yeah it's been pretty windy here too i'm sure i'm sure whatever we got though tim yeah. you, you're it's it's what probably like negative 20 up there hey in the no no, no. Frigid it's, cold north it is beautiful it is uh it is four degrees celsius up here like 37 just fahrenheit it is okay. beautiful up here all right yeah it's That's, actually pretty close to what we were here yeah it's it's been warm the last like two months i.e like not minus 40 uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, no speeder bikes and in ewebs up there, huh? Yep, and and we're in a pretty great week for a physician engineer. It is both Pi Week and also the week up leading up to St. Patrick's Day. So, oh man, Pi Week! I remember in high school. Uh, I'm assuming everybody did this. We had like competitions to memorize like the farthest digits in Pi. All I, I, I'm just at three point one four. That's all I got. We did very different things in high school. We we hit each other in the face with pies. That's what we do for pie week. Oh, okay, all right. Well. You, you you buy a pie and then you hit someone in the face with it, and it all goes to charity. Okay, okay. Yeah, we had very different upbringings. It seems like. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um. Yeah. So today we're gonna kind of wing things. Uh, that's the plan. Today is we're winging it. Kyle's not here. He's got some other stuff going on. We're in a bit of a lull with. How the meta is developing even if there was a meta to develop everybody's hiding their tech um so like i'm not don't... i don't care <laughs> sure yeah, i sure. think you published an article about it <laughs> yep <laughs> yep those are those of us that care are hiding their tech <laughs> uh, and so there's not a ton of talk about in that range um but we are going to talk a little bit about adapticon and then we're going to see where uh where the night takes us um so why don't we open up with uh, something I meant to do last cast, and that is, um, if you're not on the Discord or not on the Facebook, the game uplinks for all of the events for Adepticon have been posted. Um, I don't believe they've gone out via email. Hopefully they've that's happened by the time you watch this podcast. Um or or he listen to this podcast. If they haven't, um, I'm gonna ask Jay to post them in the description, and they'll be there. Uh, basically, I think everything but unconventional warfare, uh, is out and registerable for if you've got a ticket. Yeah, I believe so, that is correct. Yeah. Um. So. That's exciting. We're getting close. We're like a week out. Um. And in my excitement, I did a thing that I that I told myself I wasn't gonna do, guys. Changed your flight? No, I haven't even booked my flight yet. Oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> that's <laughs> wild. I I told myself so here's the thing. I uh I I do live dangerously on the flight side of things, and I am probably getting close to the wire on this one. However, it is it is completely drivable if I had to do it. So like if I couldn't book a flight, I definitely could just make the drive. Not a big deal. Um, but uh, what I was going to say was I actually, so I have, I have a lot of issues with all the side events happening at Adepticon this year. And I was like, I'm not going to sign up for any of them out of principle. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna veto them. But I dropped my Middle Earth ticket, and I may have signed up for all the Legion side events. That um, I don't know. I, I'm kind of assuming I can do that day of. So this was this was the reason I did it was because I was told that that probably wasn't on the table. Mm -hmm. I think they definitely should do that. I don't know. Maybe that'll be like a day of decision where they're like, oh, we've only got 20 people for doubles. Maybe we should just like let people play. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but that was definitely, I, I got a, I think a Saturday doubles ticket, uh, spec ops ticket for Sunday. I signed up for the like unconventional warfare league that I'm probably never going to play because they're not organized games. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you have to go find an opponent or whatever. Um, you but, talking to people? Uh, what's up? You trying to find the people to talk to you? Yeah, you know. I don't even <laughs> want to do that at the bar. I'm not going to do that at Adepticon. <laughs> right? You know? Um, so I will say, I think I'm bringing a... Uh, Iden quadruple bounty hunter to uh the unconventional warfare thing that'll be fun that sounds pretty fun yeah yeah it's just Iden uh boba din bosk ig88 two naked stormtroopers and inferno squad and all the bounty hunters just have hunter on them so i'm just gonna use Iden and inferno to like marker light things <laughs> and then and then i don't know we'll see how it goes <laughs> Yeah, I plan on just showing up to the table if I bomb out, and then I can hopefully play. And if not, I'm going to take a Uber to Chicago and hit the House of Blues. There you go. The that House sounds of Blues. Like a, that sounds like a solid plan. Yeah. You're making me very jealous. Right? Huh, I mean, I've got an extra bed, man. <laughs> right. Come well, on down. Don't I'm, threaten. You, don't threaten me with a good time. You're not the only one that hasn't booked a flight yet, Tim. Well, I mean, flight <laughs> uh, okay. So really side tangent. Flights from Winnipeg to Chicago, two like almost sister cities, shockingly expensive. Is I don't know enough about Chicago. Is like Winnipeg close to Chicago? Sixteen hour drive. So no. So no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I I mean on, honestly, my Canadian brain is like sixteen hours. That's like eh, that's not that far. Okay. I mean, it's only a ten hour drive from here. Um, so. I don't know. Uh, I looked at airfare over the weekend. It's like 180 bucks so for, for from DC, but DC is just like it's a weird, yeah. it's a weird place as far as flying out of goes and prices. It's, Everything's I mean, much it's, cheaper. It's the difference between domestic and international. International, yeah, that's right. Because like last year we drove down to Grand Forks, but even like the, then you're flying out of a small, really small city to go to Chicago, and it was not cheap. Yeah. And I guess we probably should mention for anybody who is adept attending Adepticon for the first time, um, the layout is a little different than some of the cons for actually getting to the location. Both of the Chicago airports are a solid 30 to 45 minutes away. Um, so yeah. don't expect to just land there and be like, hey, I can walk over. Um, it's it's going to be an Uber ride or some Definitely sort don't of public try to transportation. Walk. <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm going to be honest. I wouldn't even try public transit. No. frankly i i don't know if there is public transit that can get you over there if there is it's definitely like a bus sort of situation yeah so there usually is um so we're technically in schaumburg which is actually a it's kind of like a business retreat area um, sure. the section where adepticon is is basically just a bunch of hotels that host corporate events and that's how they stay in business yeah. um so there always are shuttles that run back and forth from the airport but generally you have to sign up ahead of time and basically just say like hey i want i want to be on the shuttle so it's usually complimentary, but it takes a little bit of groundwork. And then yes. double check the hotels that you're staying at, because I know in the past there's been multiple official hotels. And some of these official hotels are like a 15 minute walk or two or three minute Uber ride down the way. So just make sure that you're prepared for that. The good little, news, the good shocking. news there too is that um I stayed at a different hotel last year and there is a shuttle service specifically for Adepticon that does like a, a ring around the like near hotels. Um, like I didn't have to take an Uber to the venue once last time, even though I wasn't staying there I, and the, and the shuttle was free. Um, yeah. So. I just walked last time. It was like a 10, it was a solid 10 to 12 minute walk um, because you can essentially just cut through parking lots and across the highway. 
And, you know, it's chilly, but it's not that bad. It's a nice way to, like, wake up in the morning after you're hungover. It is not chilly. Let's let's calm down now. No, it is totally <laughs> chilly. I'm sorry, guys. It is it is going to be pretty frigid. Bring your winter coats. Ah, man. Um, Just because you're used to the extreme doesn't mean that that's normalcy. Look, man. <laughs> I, uh... this, it is built into my Winnipeg blood that we have to act tough around everyone. Even though it might be a little chilly. That's fair. Actually, wind jacket more important than winter jacket. Truth. That in might Chicago. Be, and that, well, I mean, yeah, it's. I know that it's got like the nickname, the Windy City, but like it's really only windy, like on the shore. Yeah, but but if you're actually walking, turns out all you really need is a wind jacket. Yeah. And also, layers is key. You put a you put a wind jacket over a hoodie, and you are warmer than a winter jacket. So, uh, yeah, so I signed up for Unconventional Warfare, playing IG-88 and stuff. Um, I'm also signed up for Spec Ops. I'm going to play the ARC, the ARC squad, I think, because it looks kind of cool. Um, have you guys gotten a chance to play Spec Ops at all? Uh, I forgot it was a thing. Oh. I also completely forgot it was a thing. All right, all right. Uh, so the short answer is no. Um, I looked at the PDFs when they dropped them the day that they dropped them, and I think that's the last time I've spent time looking at it unfortunately okay all right all right um, so what what is in the arc faction enlighten me yeah so <laughs> <laughs> um it's just is uh so i guess a couple things about spec ops because i i really enjoy it i don't think it's particularly well balanced there's like <laughs> there's definitely some like spec ops teams that are significantly better than other spec ops teams um but but it's fun you know, like it's, I don't think it's meant to be, it's not, it's not meant to be competitive, right? Or I assume it's not. Um, so the arc, the arc faction is you got an arc trooper captain, and basically his special ability is he gets to like, he gets to sh shoot twice every, every turn. He's basically got like barrage, um, with his entire like, uh, ranged attack or melee attack, I guess. And um, in Spec Ops, the arcs, their, like, special thing is every time they shoot, they get green tokens just for, like, doing things. Um, in addition to, like, all the arcs have reliable one. It's like, it's like I don't know, they have keywords in Spec Ops that they should have in, you know, real leading. Uh, <laughs> but, um yeah, so they when they shoot, I'm pretty sure they get a dodge token and they have reliable. Um, and the squad is like one arc trooper captain where his special thing is he shoots twice. There's like a couple just like normal dudes that literally they just they just like have reliable one. And then there are two jetpack troopers, um, who I believe have I think it's called I think jump in this game is called like bound. And it's it's essentially like you can take a move action, ignoring terrain. Um, and then the last guy is the, I believe, the DC-15 trooper who also has a jetpack. And his special ability is that whenever he shoots, he gets to, like, dash for free. So, like, in, in addition to, like, jumping over terrain and stuff. So he's, like, your heavy weapon's, like, super mobile, and you can kind of do, like, peekaboo shenanigans with them, which is cool to keep him safe. Um. So yeah, I don't know. I played it probably like ten or twelve times. I've really enjoyed it. I think some of the scenarios are very interesting. Uh, if if uh, again a, a little bit unbalanced, um, based on who's the the main thing in Spec Ops is that all of the scenarios are asymmetric, and that like there's generally an attacker and a defender or something similar to it. You know, um, you're trying to do like perhaps uh similar things to your opponent but generally in complete opposition to them um i think my my favorite mission for spec ops is the attacker at the be there's there's a so the defender's got two like intercept the transmission point things i guess they're more like evaporators really and the attacker gets three objective tokens at the beginning of the game to assign to their units and one of the objective tokens is is like actually a transmission and the other two are decoys and you've got to get 
the transmission objective token to one of the transmitters and like send it out but your opponent doesn't get to know which one has the actual codes uh, it kind of sounds like a mix between kill team and imperial assault that's kind of cool yeah yeah it's definitely very kill team it's super kill team it's definitely like that's that's what they got going on and um i think for that it's really good the imperial kill team is really good because all the like half your kill team gets uh free standbys um at the beginning of every turn um which turns out even in kill team very strong <laughs> <laughs> just put it back on clones man yeah yeah we very need the help strong. i mean you know they're all mini mini rubble boba fets running around um <laughs> Um, I think the major deviation uh, Spec Ops has over Standard Legion is you actually take damage from suppression tokens. Um, so if you like have suppression over your courage value rather than getting panicked or anything, you just like take damage and wounds in excess suppression tokens, and you immediately just shred the suppression. Um, that actually sounds kind of interesting. Might have to like stop by and check that out on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, I would I highly recommend trying it out. I don't think it's perfect by any means. I I suspect this is still like a version 1.0. You know, Legion went through like, I don't know. We're on we're in 2.5 or wherever we are these days. Um, you know, there's been a lot of revisions to the game, so I'm sure there'll be a lot of revisions here. But anywho, um I haven't decided on a doubles list. I also don't have a doubles partner right now mainly because i don't intend to actually play doubles i mean yeah i agree i would preferably be playing standard 800 point legion on saturday because i went three and zero on the first day four and oh but yes uh, i don't expect all those people to show up don't worry okay okay all right i'm expecting i'm expecting we're gonna get a shatter around on uh is that friday uh yes it'll be friday yeah, friday yeah. i'm, I'm expecting, just expecting the usual like 10 to 15 percent you know standard tournament doesn't show rate yeah, I just like 10 to 15% this time around is like 40 people. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I mean, it kind of tracks with the numbers that we saw at LVO when it was like 128 people signed up. We had like 104. So That's fair. It tends to, it tends to go across tournaments. Yeah, hopefully I'm wrong. I really hope I am, but... I mean, I, I wouldn't mind. Before. I would much prefer it was a three-round day. <laughs> 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 uh, <to be> <laughs> I wouldn't. I don't know. I wouldn't. I actually have a very good record in round fours. Um, I just feel like mentally I stay pretty strong across the four games. Mentally, um, it's just in. like going to hockey and soccer tournaments back in the day of like playing for fourteen hours. So you know, if I could do that, I could play tabletop game fourteen hours. Um, so I'd like I, to play the four games just because I, I tend to do pretty well there. And I, if you're flying out for the trip, you get more game time. I I think it was Mr. Ryan from Savgas who said I might not be great on my first game, but I'm usually better than my other the other person. And I think that, like, if you're used to long days, you know, competing at other things for long days, you're just, you're able to keep going longer. And yeah, you don't need, just like running away from a bear, you don't need to be fast. It's just faster than the other person. Yep. <laughs> that is very fair. I will say four round days do turn into a bit of a a stamina. I mean, even four round days aside, a three-day tournament that is like, you know, you're playing round what, eight on day three. Um, after, still uh, after going out the night before. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> some of us do that. Some of us are old men, Tim. I don't know <laughs> what to tell you. We we turn in and just go to sleep as soon as the day is over. You can but, still do those. Don't worry. You say that, but I I'm I'm like pretty sure I can't. I'm gonna. It's nine thirty right now. We're gonna finish this up at like ten fifteen, and I'm gonna be solidly in bed and asleep at ten thirty. Dude, I got five hours to go. Yeah, <laughs> that's well, yeah, more than five hours for me. Um, but I think you know going into Adepticon, uh, if you're someone who hasn't like competed in an event that is that long or takes or you know even just assuming that you're only playing day one like four rounds is like i don't know it's gotta be like what 12 to 14 hours of, of legion basically at that point 
Yeah, because we're usually looking at like 10 hours by the time that you factor in the lunch break and the 15 minutes in between rounds for the three rounds. So tackling another three hours at that point, you're talking like a 13 hour day. Yeah. It's a long day. Yeah. No, plus, plus you got to wake up, plus you got to get there. You know, you want to get up like an hour ahead of time, get your breakfast, transport over. You got to do everything on returns. You still haven't had dinner yet. I mean, it's a 16 hour day by the time that you're done with everything. That's a long time. Yeah. Re- def- re- remember to eat. Yes. Remember to eat. Definitely don't try and register the day of the tournament. Do that the day before, like for <laughs> sure. Don't listen uh, to me. Adepticon <laughs> registration lines are horrendous. You yep. will be late. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but, but yeah, I think the biggest thing is drink some water, drink water and drink lots of it. Don't drink too much <laughs> of it so that you're constantly having to go to the bathroom. But like, you know, I don't know, like one bottle of water a game is probably, probably Most definitely. reasonable. And, and also, I mean, this, and it's also like a sports thing, kind of constantly be drinking some water. Don't like, yes. You don't remember, oh, I haven't drank water for three hours. Let me drain a bottle. Try to have, like, oh, between rounds, take a sip. Oh, your opponent's taking a little extra time to think. Take a sip. And that's just better you for get, your body. Yeah. Did you get tilted at a dice roll? Take a sip of water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, because just distract yourself. Um, and then pro tip for Adepticon. Um, there is a Starbucks that is a floor up and about, I don't know, like 35 feet away to the side. That is way cheaper than all the concessions for water drinks, et cetera. So oh, no, if you, no. yeah. So if you go beforehand or go at lunch, um, it takes like ninety seconds to walk there. You just have to leave the hall, go up the escalator, and and walk like forty five feet, and um, you can get basically all the the drinks there for cheaper than the concession stands. Um, and they will let you buy sixteen drinks at a time. We discovered that was the limit last time. <laughs> I'm sure they stock up before. Oh, they do. They just capped us. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, totally. Yeah. I mean, uh, six, 16 is a lot. Also, yes. another another pro tip, because we all often have, you know, carrying cases for models and stuff. At least mine, I have way more room in there than I ever actually need for models. The bottom half of my case is always, like, bottles of water, granola bars, and other stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah got to bring those snacks. And I'm pretty sure Adepticon's pretty snack-friendly over yeah. as far as bringing stuff in goes. There's actually not a ton of food options at the venue itself. Um, like, the, Don't get me wrong. There's Starbucks and there's like a couple of concession things, but they're generally pretty jam-packed all the time. Yeah, it's basically like two food carts um, that are set up just outside the registration desks, and the line is very long. Yep. There's a there's a restaurant upstairs too, but it's like it's definitely like you got to sit down. It's gonna be a twenty minute wait, like if you're lucky type situation. Um, so, I I brought frozen lunch every day last year. No one hassled me. So. Yeah, yeah. If if you're not an ass about it, they don't care. Yeah, and like they also like I mean, as someone who watch notices these things like. The security is often around the perimeter of Adepticon. Like, as long as you, like, have whatever you want to bring in in something and you get into, like, the gaming area and then don't, like, wander around with it, right? Like, eat at your table, or whatever. Like, security isn't usually, like, wandering into the hall. So, do with that what you will. Yeah, I'm not even sure if food and drink are technically prohibited, to be honest. I I would assume so, based on how these things usually go, but... I think... I think outside food is technically prohibited. So mm-hmm. just like keep it at your bag or on the chair and not on the desk or on the table. Okay. I definitely remember last year, I'm pretty sure like we got like groceries ordered to the venue and like, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like uh, we yeah. did like the, we did have the like Giordano's orders sent to us, but I know that was technically like an official order from OP. Uh, so sure, I would sure. assume that was. A little nice different. Kosher. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh um I, I will say the food stuff that's outside the venue that you have to drive to is is pretty good. And there's definitely a bunch of restaurants like very nearby that are walkable. Um not really walkable in like you're gonna leave the tournament and come back walkable, but they are, you know, if you're done for the day, walkable, I would say. There is a hidden gem of Chicago slash Schaumburg there as well. It's called Blueberries Pancakes, or 
blueberries in the name of the pancakes anyway it's a breakfast joint that's like in the complex there um Hmm. show up right when it opens um because there's still a wait and it is there'll be some of the best pancakes you've ever had it's like 12 dollars, and you get this giant stack of four and they're covered in toppings and it's a it's a really great breakfast for like day after the event sounds like a lot of calories mike it is okay (laughs) so if you're playing 14 hours of legion man you need the fuel that's fair that's fair (laughs) so uh mike are you just signed up for the the main event yeah right now i'm just signed up for the main event um i wasn't really joking earlier um if i the plan is still to obviously play saturday because i would like to to x and o um day one but if i don't i'm going to try to sign up for one of the doubles or unconventional warfare events on the same day and if not i'm just going to take an uber into chicago and go like blow the day at a bar or house of blues so sure well, the good news is you're playing Republic, so you'll probably have a lot of doubles part, potential doubles. I'll part. probably have a lot of potential doubles, <laughs> and I, um, I'm i going to bring a side list. So I actually did doubles with Nick last year, and yeah. we did, like, quad Dark Trooper Vader. Oh that sounds... <laughs> and, like, the heart of the Dark Trooper meta. <laughs> sounds horrible to play, guys. Oh, it was. We actually ended up playing a mirror match round one. Um, That's why we bought 16 beers, and then... And back down. <laughs> did did everybody just like basically have to take a shot when when a dark trooper died? Like, <laughs> um, I don't really remember, but I do know that twelve <laughs> of them were gone between the four of us. Like by the okay. time that we finished round four, when we just conceded because our dark troopers like failed to save, nice. um, and then we just ended up dropping. So like doubles is really fun, but you can do like really wacky stuff. So I'm gonna essentially bring like all of my republic models in case, because I may or may not be switching from pikes or arcs to pikes so i'm gonna have both of them with me (laughs) yeah man i uh i've had the uh privilege of testing a bit against the list that you talked about uh last time you were on and i definitely think the pikes are just like way better like the arcs are fun yeah and they're flexible but they when they die they die so i i sent you a, a message yesterday um oh I maybe no, it's fine. So basically, I got effing rolled by EXD so oh. bad with the arc list that I don't know if I can play it in case I run into that matchup. EXD is pretty good, man. It is. And man, it turns out when all those dice with the no cover go into your arcs, it feels way worse than when it goes into your pikes. I think the biggest issue I have had with arc troopers in like even in Yoda lists, but mostly in non Yoda lists, is arcs kind of want to be the tip of the spear, which yeah. generally means they're like the first things to get shot. Um, Yoda is able to kind of like bypass that with like guidance and you can kind of mess around with it a little bit. But when you're just playing Anakin, man, it's just like, so I actually get in had- there. I had a chance to try it again, try the Yoda version versus the EXD as well. Yeah. And um, I just found it doesn't really compete with the speed three kiting. The speed three kiting is very good. And yeah. I am not confident that if I run into a competent player running EXD, I will be able to win that once or two times in a row. That's fair. That's fair. Because it um, just sucks up all of your surges defensively. And then when you actually need to clap back against the droids, you have nothing. Yeah, I think in that matchup specifically, you sort of need Yoda to get in there. Um, That's like one of the ones where like uh, not having burst of speed on Yoda hurts like a lot. (laughs) I I got Anakin in uh, pretty early and I took one model off. (laughs) What? Okay, that seems so. I'm not trying to like... no. So that that obviously is a little low, but okay. the right. downside to that is, um, as I've talked about at length on my cast and here, um, the super attack cards are some of the best command cards in the game. This they're just attached. Pretty good. They're just attached to not super great units at the moment, but the XD notwithstanding. Um, so when a player knows how to time those cards against you, especially with your dives, and you have strategize and you can't always win the roll off um it's not hard for like the bx's to get two dodges they have impervious and then they have repair bots on the side anyway so with a five dice 
or eight dice lightsaber, you can't always wipe a squad if the dice aren't, you know, in your favor. And in small sample sizes like that, if they spike by even one save, it's like, oh crap, I took two models and they're both coming back. Yeah, no, for sure. The repair bots in that list are quite excellent. <laughs> I think uh, like the double repair bot version is kind of what takes it just a little over the top from being like a solid B tier to an A tier list. Yeah. Those extra four wounds wherever you want are massive. Well, especially with the attrition on basically all those squads, right? Mm -hmm. Not not only just four squads, four wounds, period, but being able to repair the four wounds that matter most in the game, which is the first four wounds taken, are huge. Right. And that's, it, and that's not even counting the six shield tokens plus the four that come back on the three pip. Yep. Well, and the, I think my experience thus far has very much been that the shield tokens kind of do a pretty good imitation of like a pike squad. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. and you know what pikes don't have are medics and red saves and surging red saves that um because generally there's a surge token on the on they're the always they always have a surge token and if yeah. they don't you're not playing against somebody who knows how to run the list let's be real no yeah. offense to <laughs> anybody else running it yeah so they're surging red on d they've got the shields they generally have a dodge token or two from strategize or wherever maybe a command card or something um and as soon as like imagine just imagine if the first like two times you kill the pike model they just <laughs> got put back that's what this is yep um i can imagine because it happened and it doesn't feel good <laughs> because it happened to me <laughs> no so um, i uh, i think i'll be switching so i'll have a lot of extra models for doubles <laughs> so i do feel and maybe we can talk maybe use this conversation to lead into something that i've been feeling generally a lot lately and that is i feel like um we are at least until we see a points balance update we have moved into a zone of the game that is what I would classify as like dominated by hyper efficient lists. Yep. Um, Do you want to expound on that a little bit? Yeah. So I think I think that there are there are like four examples I want to give. Um, the example number one I think is EXT, and that EXT is what I would classify as like, it is hyper efficient on offense and that like, it is just throwing a sheer amount of dice at you with no cover, sharpshooter, whatever. And then on defense, it's also extremely efficient because it often doesn't have to roll any dice. And when it does, you just bring the models back, right? Um, if, we, if we look at the other like A tier lists that are in the meta right now, um, I'm not going to look at all of them, but I'm going to talk about the ones that I think fit this mold. Um, I think, like, we're looking at, I think, Kentucky Dan's list from that he's been running for a while now is like a very, it's kind of when I really started thinking about this. Um, Which and it is, might be that's the that? that's the Bosk Pike spam with the Dodge Cash Dodge people or Cashing people. Yeah, right? it's like he's got prepared supplies on all his Pikes. Um, he's got Bosk, he's got three Capos, he just has like infinite dodge tokens. I think that list would be better with a sixth pike in it instead of the Black Sun. That's just my opinion. Uh, but just to like continue to could turn the efficiency up to 11, like that's what the list is doing. Like, I would rather not have a weak point that can get like pierced away, particularly in a meta full of arcs. Um, but I mean, that list just, it's its not only, again, def defensively efficient because it's almost never rolling dice. And when it does, it's like on danger sense and all this other stuff. You you got to eat through like four dodge tokens on a unit before you even can make them roll dice. And then, and then once they do, you're just like charging them back up with your capos, right? You're just like, oh, you want to shoot this unit you've been shooting? Here's some more dodge tokens. And, and pikes are very, six man pike units are no slouch on offense. Um, and I think to that end, I also think like Pike gun lines, Kentucky Dan list aside, like the Capo, 
the the capo pike gun lines that are also running bosk right now are also extremely efficient you know the pike the pike unit itself is the most efficient unit in the game i don't think that's up for debate though i'd love to debate it if anybody is has a counterpoint to that i don't know if i have a, a valid argument for something else is the issue <laughs> that that's um, what that's what i'm saying you might be able to make an argument for black sun but they're range to an in so it's yeah. tougher that's fair i mean but i also think to some extent i don't think the black sun lists are as good but i also think they kind of fit this conversation and that they are heavily skewed towards offensive efficiency um but in that vein i think uh these like melee wookie lists we're seeing that don't have yoda in them are also you know again extremely efficient they do a high amount of damage over the course of from range two to melee and they're efficient their defensive efficiency is just in like there's like a hundred wounds in these lists like you it's a lot of damage you got to do to take them off the table. And we can put Ewoks in this category too, I think, in the, you know, 14 act Ewoks, I, if, if that's not an efficiency list, I don't know what it is, you know. Um, and I just feel like we've kind of like moved from what I would term as like lists are getting like good to decent value and like have some tricks in them to not nah, we're just like all in on i want to roll the most amount of dice i want to roll the least amount of dice on defense and that's like all i want to be doing all the time yeah i think there's two things that have contributed to that um the fact that it's very easy to spam high wound models aka battle forces uh, outmaneuver is still ridiculously cheap and arguably one of the biggest problems in Legion for balance purposes. Not that the keyword itself, but just the way that it's priced and the way that it's used. And then the objectives are solved. Everybody yeah. knows exactly how to play every objective and has for three years. Sure. So there's not a lot of incentive to go searching for that, you know, I'll call it a, a rogue list or a rogue deck that's going to play an objective differently because it's just not there right people have figured out how to play bomb and run with gun lines yeah. right like back yes. in the day we've you, we've you took 13 x steps because you just like auto won against gun lines but that that doesn't really happen anymore no because our gun lines now have the ability to deal with that because we have yoda arcs we have exd speed threes um wookies are wookies they get free moves after they lose models there's ways to mitigate that and then now once i drop my bombs anyway you still have to beat me on attrition and these gun lines, as you're saying, are just so hyper-efficient that you're not going to beat me on attrition. Nope. Yeah. And I don't know if any of that is a bad thing. Um, I'm not sure either. I, I, yeah, I want to clarify. I'm not saying that this so, is a bad thing, but I do think that this is the direction we are presently headed. We, we talked about this like two times ago when I was on. Both of us are primarily gun line style players. It's a facet of the game that we enjoy. Um, so I'm not complaining about it, but it is definitely been prevalent for a little bit longer than it probably should be and and i will say a lot of my games have felt the same lately i think is my maybe if i am critiquing or making a complaint um there definitely doesn't feel like there's a lot of variety like i was you know i went to cherokee or whatever a couple weeks ago i brought that stupid gin list but at the end of the day that was just an efficiency gun line hidden in disguise behind like a little tricksy thing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and it worked really well, <laughs> but like I don't know, you know. Um yeah, I don't wanna I don't wanna harp on it, but I, I really do think that comes down to just the game has been I'm gonna use the word stale for lack of a better word, but the objective deployment setup has been stale for a while and that people know how to play it. Yeah. And there's just no, I shouldn't say no way. There is very, very little window to innovate against something that is hyper efficient in an objective that everybody knows how to play. Yep. And, you know, just give us a couple of new ones or tweak the ones that we have into a more varied scoring format. And I think that fixes a lot of the quote unquote problems. Sure. They'll make the game a little more dynamic. I mean, I think it would be really cool if somebody shows up to Worlds and breaks the like hyper efficiency meta that's going on right now i'm like i'm like worried about my yoda list honestly because <laughs> it's 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 not like 
compared to like basically everything I just rattled off it is not efficient. It it takes it does not do well taking damage. It's not built for that. It's a little and the reason that I went away from it is it's a little prevalent to variants. And if you have like one fire support that whiffs through all your tokens, or if one of your arcs spends three dodges and then goes one for four, like you're just boned. He's dead. Yeah. He's dead. Like go um, walk to Starbucks and get a coffee and come back because like it's about the same thing. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, no, I I agree. I uh, which it's it's been interesting in in my preparation for worlds. I know Mike, you've kind of mostly decided on a list. It sounds like um, I'm still kind of undecided because I like I don't want to play six pikes. <laughs> you know, uh, that's not <laughs> doesn't sound fun to me um but like i'm i'm a little bit worried because i don't think yoda does very good yoda has trouble with the anakin pike balls the the actual pike balls have a lot more firepower yeah if i owned more than two pikes i would probably be going down that route but i am capped out there and i uh i don't want to borrow nick's models every time i go to a tournament so i'm gonna stick with this that's fair that's fair (laughs) thank you nick (laughs) <laughs> also there's there's something to be said for not turning trader at the bigger events right like you gotta kind of you gotta stick with your guns yeah. i don't know and i've i've put well after last weekend and well by the time that we get to adepticon i'll have put about 25 reps into a couple of these anakin padme variants so i, I feel pretty confident in that i've kind of run the gauntlet per se put the time in yeah 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 there's there's not an archetype out there I haven't played against yet. I haven't. There's not saying they've all gone very well, but I've played against the archetypes, so I think it's my best chance. So where are you coming down on saber throw? Uh, I have gone back to barrier at the moment. Okay. Um, I just you gotta take away some of the exd shots. Yes. And yes, I played I played against a Wookie, one of the Yoda Wookie battle forces, and I played against a tweak that had two of the ranged Wookies. And holy hell, did I miss barrier in that? Because range three piercing Wookiees um, just shred your Anakin gun line if you don't have barrier there. Yep. That's fair. I think my favorite version of the Yoda Wookiee list actually runs a one of Flutter. Um, And it makes like playing like bombing run against it is like an eight act list, like really scary. Uh, yeah. The flutter is a crucible because I played against the Yoda Chewy double flutter one at Crucible um back in November or whenever we were there. Um was terrifying. Um, and I had some some issues killing naked Wookiees with Magda there that really spiraled that game. <laughs> but um the flutters were disgusting with the Yoda tokens. What sort of world have we come to where we're talking about efficiency and we didn't we didn't discuss Magna Guard outside of outside of <laughs> folding to Wookiees. <laughs> well, to be fair, I caveated that with I had some dice issues. Yeah, sure, sure. sure there is but... no world where a full Magna should not be taking models off of a naked Wookiee with no dodge tokens. That's fair. <laughs> but small sample size, these things happen. Well, yes, it, it was in this world. Yeah. <laughs> so, Tim, I did read through your article, though I can't really remember exactly all of the content i i know that you were talking about what the meta a, and all what of the a, what lists, a compliment i read your right? thing I don't know. so <laughs> what i'm trying to get at is i don't remember if in that article you were like if i were going to worlds this is what i would be playing so so the as someone who will not be going to worlds i it was basically it's kind of a like a stream of consciousness art, uh, article i just kind of wrote down as i was thinking about like ah this is a list that exists. Ah, this is a list that exists. And like basically everything I touched on, we've touched on tonight. Um, the thing that I kind of like, and what is the list I would take? The one I took last year. <laughs> um, and I sort of talked about like part of that was like, I really haven't played that much competitively in the last year. Sure. Um, basically all the lists I've been playing are just like fun. Like I've been, ba- I like I basically haven't touched Republic since Worlds last year, even though Republic is still my competitive faction, but I just play Rebels locally. Um, so I sort of talked about, like, if you don't really know, play the thing you know. 
right? If you're sort of on the fence between a couple options, right? You think, okay, 14 act Ewoks, EXT, high profession public uh, gun line. If you think those all kind of like on any given day, those could be the ticket, pick the one you're more comfortable with because that's the one that you're going to do the best with. Um, so that's part of the reason I chose it. I also like, I also sort of, I think I, oh, not that I led the meta, like there was other people doing the similar thing, but like what I was doing last year is kind of like what a lot of lists sort of took to the upteenth over as this year has gone on, right? Um, I was doing a clone Dodge Castle and then the lists that have done well in the last year have been, or not all of them, but like do- clone Dodge Castles have done quite well over the last year just because I think that's where some of the larger winds are blowing regardless. So, and I still think that list is, we, do I think it'll win? Mm. But do I think it has a chance to be up up there and mix it up with the big boys? Definitely. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, I don't know why this, uh, this triggered in my mind while you were like, I'm playing Republic. All of us here, play republic so i don't know why you triggered it specifically (laughs) but we actually got some spoilers that we didn't talk about yet oh or republic i mean like it's not a big deal but uh clone commandos and range trooper boxes are pre-orderable or like they're they're like shop things are up and they're both listed as support units on the boxes yes i'm excited about that because I have been a long-term proponent of playing infantry only and not vehicles. And if you're telling me I can shove more troopers into my trooper lists, <laughs> that tickles my fancy. It's it's very interesting to say the least. Like I'm not I'm not entirely sure you can force more troopers into Republic lists than we've got already. <laughs> I'm gonna damn well like, try. Like, I'm, I'm just I'm not sure the rank requirements are the problem there, I guess is what I'm saying. But but it is interesting from like uh maybe you can take like a couple arc strike teams and a couple full commandos sort of situation instead of I, I don't know. It, it's gonna yeah. be interesting um bad batch was an operative expansion as well yes yeah yeah and i mean and for republic and i guess empires well this will be our first i can't remember the last empire unit but like like republic got cody but hasn't gotten like a unit in quite a while so this will be fun we um haven't really gotten a a unit release (laughs) since covid i is it's the, been commander. Is the last like well non Cody release for Republic the Wookiee box? I think it was Wookiees, yeah. And it wasn't even something that was new. It was a reskin. I mean, I guess that the flutters were new, right? They came out at the same time. Oh, yes. But we're we are talking like yeah, 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 yeah. No doubt, yeah. no doubt, no doubt. Um yeah, I mean, Emperor Empire has gotten dark troopers. They've gotten, I guess, I guess, have they really only gotten dark troopers in the last couple of years? Dark troopers and operatives, yeah. 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 It's been, um, this is not a critique, just leading with it. <laughs> Since the AMG swap over, it has been heavily hero focused. Um, more single units, more, um, well, I guess battle forces and single units. Like the new releases haven't really been squads per se. They've either been reskin swads or heroes, which, like I said, is not a critique, but just a comment. I think I would be much more about the character thing if the love was spread a little more. Um, (laughs) You know, I don't know how many characters Empire has gotten thus far, but I feel like I can count at least five. (laughs) Din, IG-88, IG-11, fifth brother, sixth sister... Or seven, whatever her name is, uh, Gideon. Gideon. Um, are we counting non-physical releases? Like, does Major Marquand count? No. Okay. That um, would be pushing the narrative. I sure, <laughs> sure. I just maybe that's what I'm trying to do, Mike. <laughs> um, I need more sake before I go down that route. So that's is that's is that six? Is that all the Empire characters? Am I missing anybody? 
I do not believe so. I have HQ pulled up on the side. Shameless okay. Fitz Rupert plug. Yeah. And then they're all laid out uh, nicely Cat, in front of me. Cat Cad Bane got thrown into uh, Empire. Yeah, I mean, and like and like Boba got a rescan. Meanwhile, Republic's got Cody. Separatist Cody. Separatist got a Sasage and I guess Poggle and Sunfac now with the Geos. Though mm-hmm. Sunfac doesn't exist. He's not good enough to be anywhere cl- <laughs> uh, anywhere close to on the table. Um Poggle. I kind of hope you lose to a Sunfac now that you said that. If somebody puts a free 100 points, if if somebody wants to take a 100 point handicap against me in any game I play against them, great. <laughs> Sun, 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 Sunfac is going to be the winning unit in the game against you now. There will eventually be a game <laughs> where that is that is the case. It's like it's like the same thing that like if I lived forever, I would eventually get hit by a car. You know, like like she lived yeah. in DC. That hasn't happened yet. I mean, I guess I've been hit by a car while in another car. Does that count? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Uh, America right my favorite thing to do and this is I don't encourage everyone else to do this wink wink nudge nudge is if they come close to hitting you you just slap the back of the car to make them think they hit you <laughs> uh, we That's do do you that. get shot in Philly I wouldn't do that in Philly particularly <laughs> after the experiences I've been through <laughs> while there <laughs> But at DC, I don't know. It's a little bit more. It's a little bit. It at least feels safer. Uh, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but yeah, so yeah, let's spread the character love out a little bit. I think would be nice. Um, but I mean, so I'm a little interested. Bad Batch is an operative expansion. Do you think they're gonna be like? There's no way they're individual operatives and have like associate cure wounds, right? I am praying they're a squad because the that would just jack the activation so high. It would be really cool though. Right? It would, you, but you'd be looking at like eighteen activations. No, I mean they, they got to be like. Well, I mean, 80, 80 no, I'm just putting piece, it this way. Right? That's what I'm saying. So, like, let's just say it's, um, well, that that's Shatterpoint then. If they're all individuals, just go play no, Shatterpoint. No doubt. I'm not, I'm not, let's. But um, I'm, I'm I'm maybe not you. 18, maybe it'd be like 14, 15 activations. But if you sure. took like a nine activation list and you split Vader, for example, into like four activations, that would be wildly different than anything we have now. And That's I would fair. not be confident that that comes out balanced. Well. I'm not saying it's impossible. I would not put money on it being balanced. That's fair. That's fair. I do think it would be really cool if you could, if they were like individual operatives, because they are their characters, right? I don't know. Um, I honestly, I kind of hope that there's multiple ways to play them, right? Like you can go like, oh, they come out. There's a squad. You can take each of them as like, like full operatives, right? Like they're like you know, hundred point ish operatives if you want to take one of them or whatever yeah but then you could like I, like i mean in and in, and in you could like take like hunter and omega as like a unit or like a operative with a whatever they're called or like because one of the things that um i like about list building with like name characters if you have a lot of them in some games is like you have to choose like okay do i take the like unit version of this thing or the character version of this thing and having choices between that is always very interesting to me so I think, I'm kind of hoping there's just like a multiple layers of how to take them. So yeah. Infinity has a like a fire team concept mm-hmm. where you can essentially tie some characters together into a team. And it it like Tim's saying, kind of changes their stat line a little bit. So I think that would be really neat if they did something like that, where maybe the operative, like you're saying, the operative versions are a little stronger if they're solos, but maybe you can play like an operative squad or fire team and they lose a little bit of their oomph, but you get some different perks to them. Yeah, I think that would be really cool. Similar to Go ahead. similar to how um like I'm excited that we might be getting more like infantry based supports because it doesn't take away from he- saying like hey, if I want to run special forces, it's arcs or it's commandos. Now you could potentially look at both. I think it would be really neat to just get a, a breath of fresh air into the operative slot because 
we haven't had any changes to how that slot functions in a long time. The only change we've had is I can take more of them via battle right. force or, um, or associate or whatever. associate. Yeah. So I think having a, a shift in how the slot functions while still keeping its, you know, like its flavor or its identity would be really neat. Yeah, that's fair. I, um, I would be about that. I, uh, and, and there are special rules that we've seen in the, in the book. It's pretty cool. So, um, so other thing, I believe we were promised a rebel version of Bad Batch. <laughs> However, there is no rebel symbol on that box. I have two theories. Okay. One is positive. One is kind of cynical. Sure. Um, my positive theory is that it's an alpha render and they just don't have the rebel logo on it. That box looks pretty done to me. I'm man. reaching, man. I'm reaching there. <laughs> My other theory is they're probably going to double mark the boxes to get more cash. Double and I mark would, the boxes. Or I'm to sorry. Get um, more cash. They'll probably split the faction boxes to get more cash. Where if you want to run the rebel ones, you've got to buy the rebel box so you can get the rebel card. If you want to run the clone ones, you buy the gar box to get the gar card or gar card. They don't release a lot of units, so the more money they can make per release. The better. I mean, if they had alternate sculpts, I think that would be okay. I'd be cool with that. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not. I'm not. I think it's more likely that that's a mis misprinted image than that second one is happening. But, um, I, I think neither of those is super likely. But option one, I think, is more likely. I, my personal thought on this is maybe they spoke too soon and Disney put the kibosh on releasing them as a rebel unit um lfl can be fun to work with so, lfl can yeah. be a, you know tough right um yeah. it also is possible that there's just no rebel symbol on the box and it's still a rebel unit i suppose uh, that would be a first and i find that pretty unlikely that's kind of how i feel because all it. of the other split releases have their their logos on them so what i will say is that there is a little bit of precedence here in that the Ewok box does not have a Rebel logo on it. It has a mercenary. It has got a mercenary logo, I, which is... I I, I was going to say, like, Bad Batch... Like, we've been talking about Rebel. I think the... At least for me, the more likely way they enter in Rebels is they are, like, Gar and Mercenary, but Mercenary sure. Rebels. Because, like... I mean, I'm not all the way through Bad Batch, no spoilers, but, like, they don't really operate as rebels they're more mercenaries right like well and and i would go as far as to say like i mean bad batch isn't over yet right yeah. like we haven't we haven't gone through season three or anything but like calling them a rebel unit i don't think is super fair at least thus far you know um they're definitely so, mercenaries and they yeah. have done cool things. Totally, totally. But um, if we're going down that route, the Wookiees never really fought for the Republic. They just fought to protect their homeland while the clones happened to be there. <laughs> I mean <laughs> if sure. we, I want to go even deeper, the, the Wookiees fought one invader to get stabbed in the back by another, but whatever. <laughs> Truth. You speak in truth, Tim. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's just interesting, you know. I guess we'll see um, what happens there. I uh, a couple other interesting things I think I took away from those was that uh, the commandos I think only had two upgrade cards in their pack, despite having the commando unit and Delta Squad in the same box which is interesting because that means Delta squad's probably not like Inferno squad as far as having like unique upgrade cards to represent each dude. And the other thing was the range troopers have like six upgrade cards, um, even though they're a very generic run of the mill dudes. You know, we, we could push narrative about how Empire gets all the things, but I don't think we really need to push that narrative. It's already here. <laughs> <laughs> we can look at cold hard math for that one. Yeah. Um. 
I still am just like the rain. The description on the range trooper box just sounds like it's like a imperial unit that just like dishes out firepower, which is, you know, like every other imperial unit that exists in the game. But uh, it definitely do doesn't really suggest that they work any differently. I mean, I'm still kind of out of the keywords and stuff we saw that we talked about on last week's episode. I'm not really sure like what they're gonna have that is new. Hey. They just strike me as like, are they just going to be HRUs that you can take in regular Empire? Because it says that they traverse terrain with ease. And they're just have unhindered. So yeah. is it just like a storm? Is it just like a shore trooper with unhindered? I don't know. Hey, I maybe think you can run hopefully. three three shores, three mortars, and three range troopers, and bing bang boom, done. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just throw Boba Fett in, so he wins worlds because he can't lose it. <laughs> I I bet you there's a world where since there's support you might be able to do something like three shores, three mortars, like three full scouts, and then like one or two of these guys. <laughs> I I don't, I don't, like you probably have to take like an Imperial officer or something, but you might be able to really load up the amount of infantry you have access to there. You could go real like, this is soulless empire. I'm just a field commander skew, which is kind of neat. Yeah. But yeah, we'll see how it shakes out. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to the HRU thing, you think that they might actually have the the two heavy weapon keyword? No, I was just saying because like HRUs are unhindered, right? There. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was using them as an example of just like a, a longer range. Well, you know what? Maybe they will if they have six upgrade cards. That was where I was headed. Um, yeah. I think it's likely. I find it unlikely that they're going to be core units, or I'm sorry, that they're going to be trooper units that are weaker than either of the two core units that we have right now um, between Storms and Shores. So Yo, I... Don't do snow troopers like that, man. I said what I said. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I find it unlikely that they're going to be weaker than those units. So I think putting them closer towards the power scale of HRUs is a pretty reasonable expectation. Sure. For better or worse. That's fair. I um, uh, tough to say. This is all speculation without seeing the unit cards, but I agree with you generally. Um, yeah. I spent my last episode. We called it complete the speculation because we just shot the shit about uh, like all of the news stuff that we were spoiled per se. Yeah, so I've been practiced uh, lately. I mean, I think with the fact that they're basically up for pre-order. And the fact that we can kind of see the boxes and stuff, I would be very surprised if we walked away with Adepticon from Adepticon without seeing their unit cards. I yeah, I think that's fair. Um, that that is this feels like the gear up to like Ewoks was last year. Yeah. Um like what we might even slash likely see like one or two of these models like in the cases at Adepticon. Oh, I I yeah, I, they they gotta be. I I'm, I'm fully expecting to walk away from Adepticon with eight new unit cards. Eight. Eight. Bad Batch, Delta Squad, Clone Commandos, Range Trooper. That's what four. Maybe something new. But we also, like we were just talking about, we don't know if they're Rebel. We don't really know anything about how they function. Like, is Delta Squad on the Clone Commando card? Is a Clone Commando separate? Like, there's a lot that we don't know. Yeah. So yeah. I'm fully expecting to walk away with eight. I think the game needs a little jolt. Like we haven't seen anything new hard info for a while. And I think they're aware of that. So I expect to get a little bit of a flood because we've, there's a couple panels on Sunday. There well, is. Yeah. And, and how it worked last year. Like I, I, I was sort of expecting the same thing that happened last year, which is like get a handful of unit cards and how stuff works. And then like some teases for the long, like for the rest of the year. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Cause like when we walked out of that panel at Adepticon last year, we basically knew like the unit cards, the things that are coming out in the next few months, and then like basically what the rest of the year looked like. So I'm expecting kind of sort of about the same for this year. Yo. Sorry. I'm I'm reading Adepticon chat in the Discord <laughs> as we're uh, as we're as we're doing this podcast. I'm glad we're holding your attention, friend. Oh uh, we <laughs> look, look, man. The reason I'm making this like pause in our regularly scheduled programming is because hank uh the organizer for adepticon is posting pictures of terrain for oh. um, some of the boards and he definitely just posted a bunch of height three terrain 
Yeah. And it actually looks pretty good. It does. It's very playable. Hate the terrain. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. Ooh. Um, a little, little, little spice there for anybody considering bringing Geonosians to worlds, I guess. Um, not yeah, those, those buildings are slick. They are. They're very Thank slick. God I don't have to travel with them. Is all I will say. <laughs> I hope they come apart. <laughs> they got it. There's they no to, way right? they don't. They yeah, have to. Yeah. Um, I can't wait. To, I can't wait to knock one over those future. I just want to stack them. <laughs> They've got pretty wide bases on. So just so that we're clear, we're looking at like uh, again, hop into Discord and take a look at the pictures if you can. But um, they're like, I would describe them. You know what they are? They are the. I think they're supposed to be the tower that Ezra lives in in rebels um and you also get to see it in ahsoka they kind of look like lawn darts they do they look like lawn darts <laughs> yeah <laughs> that actually does look a lot like the ezra towers i, I i'm almost positive yeah. that's what this is supposed to be i think it's like a scaled down version because obviously that tower is very very tall like taller than it would be like height 12 or something yeah. silly um but that's that's what this is supposed to be for sure. Um, and and or lawn darts, and or lawn darts, yeah. Um, and <laughs> Uh Not very line of sight blocking, but definitely will enable your Geonosians to trigger death from above. I think that 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 bottom, like I do like uh, buildings like that that have like they're quite skinny, but they do have like enough of a base. Like it's like a regular small building at the bottom like it is going to cover like a unit yeah it's not, it's not like the like um endor forest trees that like block like a mini like with that little extra like the rim little like thing yeah yeah it'd probably cover a unit that's fair um and definitely from some angles at least yes yeah, yeah. but yeah so that's cool uh the terrain so far that they've previewed for adepticon looks pretty good um I'm definitely interested to see how filling out like 140, <laughs> 160 tables is going to look. Um, Based on the people that they have organizing, collecting, and running the terrain section, I'm fairly confident that they'll get the job done very, very well. But that is a huge workload. Oh, it's, a, it's an incredible lift. Like, it is, it is a tall order. Uh, the train there was pretty good last year. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm kind of expecting it to be pretty good again this year. I just it this is gonna be the largest Legion tournament by probably orders of magnitude. Mm, not an order of magnitude, but like a good, a good percent. Sure. Probably like fifty percent ish. Yeah. Over the last year. Yeah. So, I mean, we're doubled last year. It's 128. Yeah, and we're at like 280. Yeah. Oh, and that's oof. just the main event. Yeah, dude. Oof. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, as I haven't been paying attention, so. Yeah. And there <laughs> and there's and there's people that still have not been able to sign up. Um because is of the like, is, is the main event full? So when I so so <laughs> oh, the oh. main yeah, so the main <laughs> event is Technically, I guess if you look on the Depticon.org or whatever the thing is, it is full. But they said that anybody that has an invite will be able to play. And there are also four people who are going to qualify from the LCQ the day before that are not on that list so far. And I am aware of at least three or four people who have posted in the Discord that still have not worked out like registration issues to actually register for the main event because they like weren't on a list. Uh, it, it, that's why I'm expecting like 40 people to not show up. Okay. Because okay. like 10% of or 10 to 15% of that is a, a large number of people. Yeah. Um I after seeing how many people are registered and going and how many people I know aren't going they definitely gave out like 500 or more invites for worlds this season. I'm going to speak out of turn. I 
think they are incredibly lucky that they did not actually have people follow through on the invites they gave out because there is no way they would have been equipped to handle an event with 400 attendees for the main event alone. Yeah. Like it could have, I think it could have pretty easily been 400 to be quite honest yeah. based on, you know, yep. I, I'm aware of at least 30 people that I know like personally that are not going. I have um, I have eight locals slash semi-local friends alone that are not going. And I am one of a small number of communities across the country. Yeah. Or like, I mean, one small community across the entire country. That is to say, I guess, that I hope that maybe next season we scale back the store invites. I think that's the problem, I think. I'm not uh, to call it a problem is maybe not the right context. I but think I have too many GCs. You think it? You think it's an issue with with larger events? I, I'm not going to say issue. I think sure, that's sure. what's. I think that's what spike because I don't don't quote me. <laughs> I think that's what spike the invites when oh, these GCs are realistically one and a half times the size of a local store tournament, and we're giving out four times the number of invites. I, I mean, there's I, there's a grand championship every three weeks. That's like that's not a grand championship. That's just if we're, we're going to do a it, monthly. Right. That's just yeah. it's it's not even a monthly tournament because if you've got a five week month, it's like every three weeks. Like it, you could get two in a month. It's just not. I don't think it has the prestige if you're going to call it a GC that has four invites. I'm not saying that we should scale down the number of tournaments, but I think we should be more selective going forward about which events get multiple invites awarded to them yeah especially like you... if we don't have uh if we're passing down invites to seventh and eighth place which is fine i'm not saying it's a bad thing but if we pass down invites that far we don't need to be giving out four for a 40 man tournament i definitely look i think i not to toot my own horn here but i think i top aided five of events this year all of the events that i went to by the way uh <laughs> and I think multiple events we handed down a couple invites like past tenth play like it was it was past the eighth place spot in a couple of these events like people not in the top eight were like getting invites, uh, and like I mean and also as someone who comes from a smaller media market and like there just aren't big tournaments around like the idea of giving invites at local stores I think is very integral to the culture of like. I like I mean if if they stop doing that that's their decision but I think any you know sports league or gaming thing where part of the culture is awarding small time tournaments to try to let people from smaller places have opportunities to the bigger places is very important so I would agree with Mike that like if the number of invites is a problem then scaling back some of the like mid level tournaments to keep the stores i think would be a priority so first of all you said you agreed with me tim um yeah, you know what i'm jay <laughs> you know what uh you're good you're good so i guess the way that the angle i was coming at that from was that i know that there was like multiple stores that ran like i don't know somewhere between like three and six like local store tournaments for their store because that's how many kits they got i mean my store ran two um mine, mine ran three yeah and i and i'm aware of some that ran like four plus i just i guess like i don't know i'm i'm willing to meet you guys halfway here i'd say like cap the kits at like one to two per store and and maybe scale down the gc stuff a bit i don't know because like at the end of the day like growing is good right it is so uh, I'll quote everyone's favorite raccoon. World should be a celebration of the game. And I think they're doing a very good job at making that the case, um, which is a little bit of a culture shift, I think, from how Worlds has been in the past. Um, but it's okay to be semi, not even to be selective, but it's okay to have a minimum requirement. Yep, sure. And that minimum requirement can be difficult to reach. That's okay. I'm not saying eliminate it for 80% of the people because there's a very good chance, like for myself, I did not attend a lot of store tournaments. I wouldn't have even been able to make it. So like maybe I'd knock myself out of the running, but 
that's fine. It just, I, I don't think we need 400 people attending. I think if you cap it at the 256 that we're at now, that's fine. Does that mean you need to give out 350 invites? Probably, because there's going to be a lot of people that can't attend it because life is life. Yeah. But I would be cautious about going higher than we are now, especially if we're going to continue to grow. And I do think that Legion will continue to grow, especially as we get new units. Yeah, and I also think, like, there is also, like, a finite amount of space in Adepticon that we can take up and use um, without putting out other game systems. Now, look, X-Wing and Armada, I don't know, maybe they're just, like, on the way out anyway, so whatever. But, um, I mean, like, Shatterpoint wasn't there last year. They're going to have space this year, probably in the same hall, right? Um there's zero chance there's not so shatterpoint was there in demos last year in the hall so you know it's going to be there for actual games yeah, this year. yeah there was just like there was two shatterpoint tables last year or like two or four and they were all in the in the vendor area um but this year i mean i assume there's going to be at least 60 tables right probably i don't know i haven't looked at the shatterpoint events um there, i mean there's no way there's less than 50 yeah Well, shall we shall we land this Adepticon bird? It's been quite the ungainly bird. Yeah. I think for not having any idea what we we're gonna talk <laughs> about today, we, we did all right. Yep. Yeah. I'd say so. Yeah, I think so too. We we touched on a lot of different topics. Um so I would love to hear everybody's speculation for what clone commandos, bad batch, and ranger troopers are gonna be in the comments. Because that's like a thing you do on YouTube videos these days. You like ask people to respond, right? And post in like, comments. Yes. Like, like and subscribe. Comment and subscribe. Smash that bell. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, check out our Patreon. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm sure will be in the pre Um but <laughs> I, I, Does Jay do that automatically? Yeah. But I, I'm going to be honest. I don't think he does it for you guys. I don't know if you guys asked him not to or if I'm making that up. But... Um, I have not listened or watched one of my own episodes in like two and a half years, so I do not know. Okay, there you go. There you go. That's that's fair. My own voice is grating to my, my ears. Exactly. <laughs> I already have to hear my thoughts more than this. I don't want to listen to them as well. <laughs> if 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 my Spotify auto plays them in my own episodes, it is it, it ruins my day. <laughs> it's a quick next. Yep. Yes. All right. Well, we've been the Notorious Scoundrels. I'm Mike. I'm Mike. I'm Timbo. Stay fresh cheese bags. I think that's the line, right? That's it. Yes. You'd think I've heard it enough times to know it by heart, but I was very unsure about that before I said it. If you join our Discord, it's an emoji as well. Join the Patreon.